Special Envoy, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. You have a rare piece of good news in the very grim picture of the situation in Syria. You have a new constitutional committee, 150 members. How important is this? How soon will they meet? And how long will their work take? As you rightly said, this is uh, really a piece of good news. Uh, for the first time after eight and a half years of uh, war and conflict, we actually have an agreement between the government and pe between the opposition SNC. So uh, this sends an important message to the Syrian people that change is possible. Uh, the Constitutional Committee, of course, uh, is not the only thing we're working on. I am said from the very beginning that the Constitutional Committee should be a door opener to a broader political process. But the committee itself is 150 people, 50 people from the government, 50 people from the opposition, and the so-called middle third, 50 people from civil society representatives. So it represents a broad specter of the Syrian society. And hopefully we will be able to convene the first meeting in Geneva uh, on the UN facilitation uh, by the end of the month, I'm, I think. Have you vetted all the names with regard to human rights, made sure there's no one with blood on their hands, and given the tentacles of the Assad uh, spy service, made sure there's no members of the intelligence community hidden in let's these committees? We, uh, let's be, uh, let me be clear on, on this. We, uh, what we have done is to, is to work on the assumption that the government is responsible for their 50 that they have nominated, the opposition is responsible for the 50 that they have nominated, and then we have a middle third that the UN then has been working on together with the parties. So of course uh, this is a compromise, uh, the composition of the committee. Uh, as you know we've also been working on the rules of procedure. Uh, but I think uh, all in all I think this is uh, looking very good. In the past there's been one part of Syria that's always been left out of everything, which is the Kurds. Are the Kurds properly represented, and I mean the main Kurdish Block who run the northeast of Syria? Uh, you know, uh, the opposition uh, has selected its own members. Uh, uh, the government has. But you know, the Kurds operate I, separately I from the rest of the opposition. I will, be coming, I will be coming to this. And since they are not part of, of that opposition, uh, no, they are not in the committee. But it's important for me to emphasize that, of course, uh, also we have Kurdish representatives on the committee. Now, you are working with this new committee, but you're also working under the guidance of the Security Council and their previous resolutions. And yeah. the last time they could really agree anything on the political way forward was a long time ago, Resolution 2254. That talks about free and fair elections in Syria. Yes. So can you guarantee to us, after all the time of the Assads in power since 1970, just sham elections, that at the end of this, whatever constitution they come up with will be a properly democratic constitution and there will be, as that resolution says, free and fair elections? I think what I can guarantee is that the work of the constitution will be based on the aspirations of the Syrian people. You know, this is Syrians sitting together for the first time after eight and a half years, working on their own constitution. And as you rightly pointed out, the Security Council resolution then says that pursuant to the new constitution, uh, there should be free and fair elections where all Syrians should participate, including diaspora, under UN supervision. So this is my mandate. I've already, of course, discussed this uh, both with the government and with the opposition SNC. Uh, I have, uh, of course, an electoral expert already working on this for me, preparing ourselves and, of course, preparing hopefully then the Syrian parties. Can I guarantee that this will take place? No, but as you rightly stated, uh, this is part of my mandate. It's very clearly stated and it's also international consensus that it should take place. And you say you're already working on that. Yes. How, it must be a very impossible task, isn't it, given that so many Syrians are now outside Syria and the same resolution says that they should be Indeed. allowed to, allowed to, to have their voice. Yes. And inside Assad-controlled Syria, it's still a police state. So how are you going to organise the first proper elections for 50 years? You know, while we have been working on putting together the Constitutional Committee, 
I have all the time stated very clearly to the Security Council in uh, my different briefings, but also to the government in Damascus and to the SNC, that we have to work on all the other issues that we, is mentioned in the resolution. And of course, one of the most important aspects of this is to make sure that we see positive changes inside of Syria, changes that will enable us to move forward, that will heal the divisions of the society, that will uh, build trust again in the society and will enable us to organize elections according to what the Security Council Resolution 2254 says. I, I have no illusions that uh, this will not be difficult, uh, but uh, if I didn't believe it could take place, I will not be in this job today. Another part of 2254, which some might argue that your predecessor, and you've been in the job now since the beginning of the year, have ignored, is the people who are detained in Syria, the arbitrary, arbitrarily detained people, particularly women and children, it refers to in that resolution. What efforts has the UN made, and what do you say to those people whose loved ones are missing? They may be in a prison, they may be being tortured, they may probably be dead, though. Uh, this is a very serious question and uh, I met uh, quite a few who have uh, been released and they have told me their stories uh, and of course this is uh, extremely difficult to, to listen to. As you know this has been part of my one of my five priorities from day number one to work on this issue and uh, I'm, uh, I'm hoping that we will be able to see bigger progress on this. As you know, we, have no, we are working together with uh, Turkey, uh, with Iran and with Russia in a working group. Uh, we have so far, I believe, have, we have had four exchanges. I believe this is uh, absolutely not sufficient. So I've been discussing with the government in particular that we need to see this uh, at a much larger scale. And that I, I've also said that I believe if this is no we now have the Constitutional Committee. This should be accompanied by hopefully confidence-building measures. One of those measures could be the release of substantial numbers of detainees and abductees. And I believe if we do this in the right manner, it would also send the right message to the Syrian people that a new beginning in Syria is possible. What do you say to those who criticize the focus of the UN over the last 18 months, and that includes many Syrians, it includes, I can tell you, privately, members of the Security Council have said this to me, that you've been distracted by this Constitutional Committee. It's been the main focus of the UN, and yet all the while, while you've been looking at this, the Syrian government and the Russians have been pursuing a military solution, picking off what were supposed to be de-escalation zones one by one, and now finally focusing on Idlib. I think what, what is important to remember is that I have said from day number one that we should, as I've said, we should not put all our eggs in one basket. We should, in parallel, work on all the other issues that is necessary for, to find a solution to the crisis. But of course, a lot of attention has been paid to the Constitutional Committee, and I've worked very hard on it. But that doesn't mean that I've not been working on the other issues in parallel. And I, when we know, hopefully, we'll get the Constitutional Committee up and working in Geneva. That, of course, doesn't mean that we will sit back and wait for the Constitutional Committee to finish its work before we sort of start working on the oldest important elements of Security Council Resolution 2254, and you have already mentioned a few of them. Let me ask you to answer the next question, not to me, but the people who are there in Idlib. More than three million people with nowhere to run to, Bombs raining down on them, on medical facilities, on hospitals, on their homes, and you come up with a constitutional committee. They'll say, what are you doing for us? What I do you say to them? Listen, I should be very careful uh, pretending that I understand fully the situation for the people inside of Idlib. I think we understand uh, the agony and the suffering they are going through. But what I would like to emphasize is that I also understand what I would call, you know, that there is a certain cynicism after eight and a half years of war, after nine rounds of talks in Geneva, that frankly speaking did not deliver much. So I can understand that questions are being asked about the Constitutional Committee. But I think we should look at this, that this is the possible new beginning for Syria. We will only know if this is correct 
after the committee has started working and whether we can move forward, as I said, in parallel on the other issues that you have mentioned already. And of course, one important element of this is that we need to see uh, a ceasefire respected in, in Idlib. We need to make sure that humanitarian uh, access is there, that people receive the support they are in need of. And then hopefully we will be able to stabilize the situation in Idlib, working on a nationwide ceasefire, stabilizing the situation in the northeast, the situation in the southwest, and then focusing on moving forward on the political process, as I said, that will heal the wounds of the Syrian society, start slowly to build trust. This will not happen you know, during a few weeks or a few months. It will take time, but it needs to start somewhere and it needs to start now. My final question. One of the main pillars of the organization that you represent, the UN, is human rights. And after eight and a half years of such misery, such a death toll, where is, in all your work, the accountability for all of the crimes that have been committed? As you know, the, the UN, uh, we consist of many different parts. So uh, my responsibility is to work on trying to find a solution to the crisis, to mediate uh, between the parties on, on this. Then there are other parts of the organization that, that will have this as its primary focus. And of course, uh, I'm being informed, I've been, uh, I'm having discussions. And of course, we, this is also issues we are discussing uh, when I'm meeting with, uh, with the government, when I'm meeting with, uh, with the opposition. But shouldn't it be part of the constitutional discussions, having accountability listen, I, built into the new constitution after this? Listen, I will be very careful to s tell the Syrians what should or should not be in the constitution. As I said from the very beginning, we have a, you know, a, a, what I believe is a, is a fairly representative body of Syrians coming together. I'm sure that this will meet the aspirations of the Syrian people and I'm sure that you know, the issues that the Syrian people find important will of course be addressed in the constitution.